I played along to records. That's what um, that's what a lot of people do. I had no official training whatsoever. Well, I say that I did actually go to to an old guy um, who uh, got me to play kind of two in the bar bass lines to stuff like "Won't You Go Come Home, Bill Bailey" and "When the Saints Go Marching In." Those kind of old tunes, and it was a kind of boom, 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 that kind of thing. My initial learning was very primitive um, you know I, I picked out notes that I could uh, picked out the riffs that, that I could uh, work out from records and they were the simplest riffs you know and uh, that gave me enough impetus and satisfaction and gratification to carry on learning and uh, and uh, get into the instrument you know more so and um, I quickly realized that I didn't really feel that I was going to improve uh, quickly enough, I think, uh, if I carried on with those lessons. So that was just for a very short period. But on the whole, I think I'm self-taught. Um, just by listening to records, around that time there was a lot of bands that played riffs. Uh, have heavy guitar riffs, heavy bass riffs. Uh, usually the bass player played much the same as the guitar player or picked out certain notes. Um, but that's how I learned, it's just to play along with riffs. And um, you quickly realize that things are in a kind of a box shape on the fretboard, and that, that, that kind of gives you confidence. And, um, you know, that's a good starting point, I think. The first album I ever bought was uh, Fire and Water by Free, and it had the hit single All Right Now on it, uh, which I still think is one of the best bass parts ever. The middle solo section in All Right Now is just rather wonderful. And I just couldn't get over the fact that he's not even playing at all in the verses. I thought, blame he's, he's dropped out completely, and it doesn't sound, it still sounds full, you know. So I couldn't. That was kind of a big lesson for me. I thought, you can actually stop playing if you want, you know. <laughs> and uh, that was a kind of a bit of a revelation for me, is the use of space to propel things along, you know. And uh, you don't need to play every downbeat, you know. It's uh, But you learn these things as you go on, you know. I love his playing too, you know. I think his... Marvellous. I saw a, a documentary on Motown the other week and uh, was really knocked out by uh, hearing... They isolated some of his bass playing away from the, the other tracks, you know, on the record. And just to hear some of the things that he was doing, which you, you don't always pick up on when you hear the record. But uh, they exposed a lot of his bass playing uh, uh, and pulled some of the other tracks down, you know. And um, it's quite amazing to hear, yeah. Uh, definitely a one-off guy, yeah. It's not really an approach at all, to be honest. It is uh, it is kind of instinctive, I think. Uh, if, I, if, I, uh, if I'm faced with uh, <clears throat> making up a bass line for a track, I'll very often sing it into the tape recorder. What I just, it's an instinctive thing, you know, I just sing the line and then set about learning how to play it, you know. Um, I don't, uh, I, as I say, I don't think it's a wise thing to actually think about it too much, you know, and think what the chords are, you know. I don't even want to know what the chords are, you know. So, um, whatever, whatever I come up with is an instinctive thing, and that kind of thing never really lets you down, you know. You um, you go with it. Uh, I think most most art forms are like that. You know, you you do them because it, you follow it. It doesn't follow you. You know, you you follow it and say that's it. You hold your hand out and say, take me there. You know. <laughs>